What up techies? Welcome back to the channel for everything science and technology. Elon Musk and NASA both have their sights set on colonizing Mars, but they have different timelines for when they want to make it happen. While Elon Musk wants to get humans to Mars within the next 10 years, NASA is taking a more cautious approach and doesn't anticipate sending humans to Mars until the late 2030s. So what exactly has NASA found on Mars that could help speed up Elon Musk's plans? For one, NASA has discovered that there is water on Mars. This is a crucial ingredient for life as we know it and it means that there's a good chance that humans could survive on Mars. Additionally, NASA has also found evidence of organic compounds on Mars, which are the building blocks of life. Let's discuss. They say great minds think alike, which is why the brightest minds at NASA and SpaceX pursue the same goal of landing humans on planet Mars. However, the scale and timelines the two entities work with are different. NASA made a massive discovery on Mars that will change everything about Musk's plans. Musk would much rather send many more people to the red planet tomorrow if possible. However, Musk should be paying attention to recent findings made by NASA on Mars because they directly affect his plans. Mars is a fascinating planet, and over the years, NASA has exerted great effort to learn more about it. The space agency has dispatched five rovers to Mars, including sojourners. The spirit of opportunity, curiosity, and perseverance has increased our knowledge of the planet. Still, the more advanced NASA's rovers have become, the more it is becoming apparent that there is a great deal more to learn about the planet. Of the five NASA rovers, only two remain. Yet, NASA cannot yet send a human to Mars. This is because it does not have all the answers to the problems astronauts will face on the planet, including high radiation levels, gravity problems, the long travel time to get there, and many more. It doesn't even have the technology to bring them back home yet. However, rovers allow NASA to explore Mars at a relatively lower cost and at no risk to humans. Curiosity arrived on Mars in January of this year. The radioisotope power system that creates electricity from the heat of plutonium's radioactive decay is one feature of the Curiosity rover. The rover can also take some amazing selfies. In this regard, Curiosity has been delivering many discoveries, influencing how scientists view the red planet. The primary objective of Curiosity's mission on Mars is to assist in determining whether or not the planet has ever sustained life in the form of microbial life. A thicker atmosphere and abundant liquid water flowing into rivers and seas were present on Mars billions of years ago. Since liquid water is essential for life as we know it, scientists believe that life on Mars could have been sustained by substances such as organic carbon. Curiosity has been helping us search for evidence of life on Mars, and one of the things it has helped us look for is carbon. The surface of Mars may be too harsh for life now, but scientists suspect that the planet has a climate similar to Earth's. There are three naturally occurring isotopes. The first two elements on Mars, C12, C3, 13, and C14, are stable, but the latter is radioactive. C12 contains six neutrons, C13 has seven neutrons, and C14 has eight impressive neutrons. C12 is the most common form of carbon found in living things, whether it be in photosynthesis, or in the metabolism of food. This is because C12 has one fewer neutron than C13, which means that when it bonds with other atoms into molecules, it makes fewer connections than C13 does in the same situation. This makes C12 the most common form of carbon found in living things. But why are we discussing carbon isotopes? It's because of the discovery that was made in the Gale Crater. The Gale Crater is located on Mars, and it's the location where Curiosity has been operating continuously since 2012. According to scientists, the sediment, before settling at the bottom of the lake, was formed through volcanic rocks physical and chemical weathering. There are other reasons for scientists to look at the Gale Crater for signs of life, such as the location containing chemical energy sources, low acidity, and other elements apart from carbon, such as oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The rover has drilled into rocks in the crater to extract a powder sample, which has been analyzed. SAM stands for Sample Analysis of Mars and is the name of the laboratory. What goes on inside SAM? Curiosity uses pyrolyses at this point to break up the material and convert it into methane. The pyrolyses is carried out within a flow of inert helium so that the process does not become contaminated. After that, a tunable laser spectrometer is used to analyze the gas to determine which carbon isotopes are present in the methane. The team behind the Curiosity rover examined 24 rock samples and made a startling discovery. Six of the samples contained increased ratios of C12 to C13. To make their comparison, they used the C12 and C13 ratios found on Earth as a point of reference. They realized that the sample from the Gale Crater contained more than 70 parts per thousand more C12 than the ratios found on Earth. 
However, what does this mean? Simply put, if these results were obtained on Earth, they would indicate that this is how it worked on Earth in the distant past. Surface bacteria produce methane as a byproduct. These are known as methanogens and prokaryotes from the archaea domain. You can still find methanogens on Earth today in anoxic wetlands and in the digestive tracts of ruminant animals. In extreme environments like hot springs, these bacteria produce methane that eventually ends up in the atmosphere, which reacts or interacts with ultraviolet light. Still, the product of these bacteria is carbon dioxide. It is tempting to assume that the same process took place on Mars, which would neatly explain Curiosity's finding in the Gale Crater. Some scientists, however, have other explanations for the findings made by the Curiosity rover in the Gale Crater. One of these explanations is the molecular cloud hypothesis, which suggests that the solar system passed through a molecular cloud hundreds of millions of years ago. Although this event is very rare, there is evidence that it occurs approximately once every 100 million years. The type of carbon that was found on Mars by Curiosity and Gale Crater would have been significantly cooled as a result of this cloud, and together with glaciation. It would not have allowed the molecular cloud to mix with the rest of the carbon on Mars. Instead, it would only increase the level of C12. However, the molecular cloud hypothesis is still highly improbable, even though it is worth looking into. The second explanation involves ultraviolet light, and it is worth looking into. According to this theory, the atmosphere of Mars contains over 95% carbon dioxide, and this carbon dioxide interacts with UV light to produce new carbon-containing molecules. These molecules would have been carried to the surface of Mars by rain, where they would have been incorporated into rocks. The difference between this process and the methanogenic one is that this one is entirely abiotic. You'll undoubtedly notice some similarities between the two processes. Studying the carbon cycle of Mars is one way scientists are attempting to determine which of the three competing hypotheses is the most plausible. Still, scientists will keep researching because they are curious. Scientists will one day have a better opportunity to analyze the rocks of Mars when samples collected by NASA's other rovers, Perseverance, and Curiosity arrive on Earth. Although Musk would have a personal stake in the outcome of certain research, he is interested in the topic for other reasons. He has big plans to settle on Mars. It hasn't been a secret that his goal is to see people living permanently on Mars and colonization is the main motivation for the new Starship rocket that Musk is leading the development but will it be possible as soon as he has planned? We don't know but can speculate that Musk will push the booteries till his goals are achieved. His rocket ships and their abilities are a clear example of the lengths Musk will go to. The two-stage rocket has many features that will help Musk achieve his goal, such as being completely reusable and significantly reducing the cost of launching humans and cargo into space. Musk also postulates that using nuclear missiles to bombard the two polar regions of Mars will create an artificial sun, which will cause the planet to warm up and produce an atmosphere comparable to that of Earth. When this happens, the only piece of technology that people will need to have to survive on Mars will be breathing machines. What do you think? Is it all possible? Thanks for joining us and please share your ideas with us in the comments section below about whether or not you think people can live on Mars.